Now let's do a rapid review of risk factors that are commonly tested on the family medicine shelf and especially on the Yosemite Step 2 CK and the Yosemite Step 3. So let's begin. What is the most common risk factor for overflow incontinence? Diabetes. So knowing the different types of urinary incontinence is extremely important. It's also important for you to know the risk factors for each type. Like for overflow incontinence, the most common is diabetes, like I just said, and multiple sclerosis is associated with urge incontinence, and age and multiple vaginal deliveries are associated with stress incontinence. Also, it's important to remember that overflow incontinence can be treated with muscarinic agonists such as bethanicol. What is the greatest risk factor for fasting hypoglycemia in the United States? Chronic alcohol use. So let's do a quick review. If a patient presents with severe fasting hypoglycemia, lactic acidosis, gout, hepatomegaly, and some kidney symptoms, what would be the most likely diagnosis in this patient? Well, that would be glycogen storage disease type 1, also called von Gierke's disease. So that's a quick step one review for you. Now let's move on to the next question. What is the most common risk factor for stress incontinence? multiple vaginal deliveries, and age. What is the greatest modifiable risk factor for a stroke? Hypertension. What is the greatest risk factor for blindness in the elderly? Macular degeneration. So this is also the most common cause of vision loss in the developing world too. It's important that you remember that macular degeneration has two types, wet and dry macular degeneration. The dry type is more common and it can be treated with vitamins like vitamin C and vitamin E. The wet type is more progressive and it is treated with drugs like bevacizumab. So if you see a clinical vignette with a patient that has central scotomas, straight lines look wavy to them, or mentions of neovascularization, then you should highly, highly, highly suspect age-related macular degeneration. What is the greatest risk factor for an adverse drug reaction in the elderly? Polypharmacy. What is the greatest risk factor for fetal tachycardia? maternal fever. So remember that a normal fetal heart rate is between 110 to 160 beats per minute. If it's less than 110, this is fetal bradycardia. If it's greater than 160, it is fetal tachycardia. What is the greatest risk factor for mitral stenosis? Rheumatic fever. And a bonus question, what is the most common arrhythmia in patients with mitral stenosis? That is atrial fibrillation. So typically on exam day, you either hear the actual murmur or the clinical vignette would describe it to you as an opening snap with a diastolic rumble heard best at the fourth intercostal space in the midclavicular line, that is mitral stenosis. What is the greatest risk factor for hypertension in a young female? Oral contraceptive pill use. What is the greatest risk factor for optic neuritis? Multiple sclerosis. What is the greatest risk factor for postpartum hemorrhage? Uterine atony. What is the greatest risk factor for blindness in patients with HIV?
C and V retinitis. What are the greatest risk factors for peptic ulcer disease? H. pylori infection and chronic NSAID use. What is the greatest risk factor for aortic abdominal aneurysms? Smoking. And this question actually brings me to a high yield point. So you have to have to review the USPTF guidelines before starting your family medicine rotation and before your shelf exam. So the USPTF recommends a one-time screening for AAA with an ultrasound in men aged 65 to 75 who have ever smoked. What is the greatest risk factor for atrial fibrillation? Mitral stenosis. What is the greatest risk factor for peripheral neuropathy? Diabetes. What is the greatest modifiable risk factor for osteoarthritis? Obesity. What is the greatest risk factor for squamous cell cancer? Sun exposure. What is the greatest risk factor for obstructive sleep apnea? Obesity. Another important risk factor for obstructive sleep apnea are large tonsils. And this is one way that examiners can like trip you up by having a kid in the case like this child and they have this snoring, difficulty sleeping, and they actually have obstructive sleep apnea. High yield complications of obstructive sleep apnea include pulmonary hypertension and hypoxia that can cause elevated EPO, which then leads to polycythemia. What is the most important prognostic factor for melanoma? Depth of invasion. What is the most important risk factor for postpartum depression? A history of depression. What is the greatest risk factor for prostate cancer? Age. I have two very high yield videos that talk about the high yield differences between postpartum blues, postpartum depression, and postpartum psychosis. I also have another video that talks about the differences between prostate cancer and BPH, and of course the pharmacology behind how we treat them. So if you want to see that video, I'll be sure to leave them in the description below. And if you're liking this content so far, please be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another video like this. Now let's continue. What is the greatest risk factor for cervical cancer? HPV infection. Another question that they like to ask is, what is the most important prognostic factor of cervical cancer or any cancer for that matter? And the answer would be the stage at which it's diagnosed. Another question that they could ask is, what is the most common cause of death in patients with cervical cancer? And that is renal failure. So that's one reason why it's important to know the different stages of the cancers that are most commonly tested, one of them definitely being cervical cancer. What is the greatest risk factor for conductive hearing loss? Recurrent ear infections. What is the most common risk factor for osteoporosis? A low BMI. And the bonus question is, at what age do we screen for osteoporosis? And that is in a woman that is 65 years old. What are risk factors for vulvovaginal candidiasis, diabetes mellitus, recent antibiotic use, pregnancy, OCP use, and a weakened immune system. I'm sure there are other risk factors and if you know them, please feel free to leave them in the description or 
rather in the comment section down below. What is the greatest risk factor for shoulder dystocia? Fetal macrosomia. What are some risk factors for decubitus ulcers? Immobility, poor nutrition, and being elderly. What is the greatest risk factor for fetal macrosomia? Gestational diabetes and pre-existing diabetes in the mother. What is the greatest risk factor for chronic pancreatitis? Chronic alcohol use. What is the greatest risk factor for erectile dysfunction? Cardiovascular disease. What is the greatest risk factor for end-stage renal disease in the United States? Diabetes. What is the greatest risk factor for female infertility? Pelvic inflammatory disease. What is the greatest risk factor for endometrial cancer? Unopposed estrogen exposure. What is the greatest risk factor for endometritis? C-section. What is the greatest risk factor for preeclampsia? A previous history of preeclampsia and nulliparity. So they're basically a tie. So hopefully on your exam day, you don't see both of these as an option um, because these are the greatest risk factors for preeclampsia. What is the greatest risk factor for chorioaminitis? Preterm rupture of membranes. So what is the greatest risk factor for pancreatic cancer? Smoking. What is the most important intervention to prevent hepatocellular carcinoma? The hepatitis B vaccine. What is the most important goal in the management of COPD? Smoking cessation. What is the most important oncologic association in celiac disease? Small bowel lymphoma. What is the most common neoplastic cancer seen in patients with HIV? Kaposi sarcoma. What is the most common cause of death in a patient with a history of chronic hypertension? An acute MI. What is the most common HIV serotype in the United States? HIV-1. What is the most common cause of death in the first year of life? Sudden infant death syndrome. What bug most commonly causes septic arthritis? Staph aureus. What is the most common cause of elevated AFP? Incorrect dating. What is the most common ECG finding in a patient with a pulmonary embolus? Sinus tachycardia. What is the most common cause of death immediately after an MI? Ventricular fibrillation. And that brings us to the end of my second rapid review for the Family Medicine Shelf Exam and for the USMLE Step 2 CK and the USMLE Step 3. If you enjoyed this rapid review, please be sure to power up the like button hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never miss another high yield review.